G'day everybody, welcome to another BM formwork video. Today something different, we're going to make honed concrete seats. I've got a step-by-step -step guide on how I did it. So the first step is to build the formwork. Got some form ply here. What you can see here is me putting my pencil guide rails together so I can do nice straight cuts. That's a pencil line there. Then I use these clamps from Bessie. There's this slot here. The slot goes in the T-track on the guide rail. You don't have to use clamps. It just means it can't move. So we just want to set the depth. This is the older Festool rail, so the ply is 20 mil thick, and then the rail is five. At the five, and then I go two mil extra. Always check to make sure you're on zero. Helps when you haven't done any cuts for a while to just check things with a square. So just take care with all your cuts, get them neat. Here we are just ripping down all the sides. Perfect cuts every time. Now I've ripped out the miter saw, cut all our pieces to length. Just makes it easier with the miter saw. A nice sharp pencil always helps with accuracy. So now I've got all the ply cut for these seats. Just gotta put it together. So the reason I'm screwing this as opposed to nailing it is when I strip it, I want it to come apart as easy as possible so that I don't damage anything. A screw is great. You just undo the screw, pops apart. Next step is to clean out the forms so they're spotless. Now we're going to silicon the corners so that it's fully waterproof to get a beautiful concrete finish. You, it needs to be fully waterproof. You can't have gaps where moisture can wick away and take little bits of cement with it and you're left with just the sand and the stone. I call that, we call that like a boniness to it. So making it fully waterproof avoids that. You get that nice smick finish. To get the corners nice and smooth, it's just a matter of getting some of the wife's hand soap, a bit of soap on the finger, and I'll just go over the edges. I'm gonna use a centering drill bit to get these holes. These drill bits are amazing. Anytime you need to center a hole, position it in, it automatically finds the center. This black powder coated steel is the legs for the benches. So drilling these holes is for the mounting bolts. So we got a six mil bolt. So drill the hole eight mil. We want a bit of leeway, a bit of room. Here I'm countersinking for the nuts. The tape goes over so the bolt doesn't fall out the bottom when I flip it over. Finished product, seal up around the bolts. Then we put the release agent on, a bit of lanolin. It's not really necessary with brand new ply, but it just helps. Here I'm cutting the mesh, leaving a bit of cover. Here I'm just tying up the middle of the mat so that because it was sagging in the middle. And here I'm just using the bolts to set the height of the mesh. Don't usually tie with pliers, found it very awkward. Just here we're leveling, leveling up the formwork so that the concrete sits level. And we mix the concrete, just a little bit of water at a time. Also we're using 40 MPA. Use higher MPA, more cement, premium finish. Get a nice dry mix every time. Okay, let's just do it in small amounts, in steps. This is pretty easy, didn't take too long.
Give it a little bit of a vibrate. Level it out with the Maggie. See how's it vibrated, all the air bubbles come out. See them coming up. Probably trying to get out. Clean up the edges before you trowel it. Give it a little Maggie. I'll start with the edges and then work my way around. Don't have to work it too much. Just take off those tires that were holding up the mesh. Just want to talk about the concrete real quick. So once the concrete's in, you want to get it all leveled out. Don't use a steel trowel. Then you just want to let it sit until pretty much it's just hard enough that you can just put your finger in. So this is still a fraction early. So in about 10 minutes, this is ready and I'll give it a float. And because I'm honing it, that's it. I don't need to finish it with a steel trowel. The tape was on there just to keep the top of the ply clean. So now we just float up, starting from the edges again, float it up, don't go overboard. And that's pretty much it. That's enough to seal it up. At this point, you don't need to do any extra troweling. I poured this yesterday, so now we can strip it. Something I'll probably do on my next one is actually strip these during like while the concrete's still green and just give this a light trowel just to seal up those holes. Now I've got a chamfer the corners. So we're going to router the corners. I've got a diamond uh, half inch router bit. This was surprisingly easy. So I just got my fez tool router with the um, edge guide and the extension to keep it stable and generally about three passes doing light passes so you don't damage the bit. Uh, worked out really well. Also, I set the router to probably medium speed, halfway on the dial. I just want to point something out with these, with honing this concrete that I've found out. The way that you trowel your concrete has a big impact on how the, how the honing process is going to go and how easy it's going to be to do it. With this one here, for example, I mag floated it got it flat and at that point I should have left it. I shouldn't have done any more. But I got carried away and you know, like I just wanted to play with it and I still troweled it, I sealed it up. But what that does is it makes the top of the concrete really hard. So that one there has been quite a bit of work to get the top layer down so that I can expose the stone. I didn't want to expose the stone very much but I need to now to make it match this other one. So with this other one, I didn't mag float it, I steel trout it, partly through error, but also experiment. I wanted to, I wanted the top to be soft, so it's easy to hone. But what I've just found out is when the concrete is green, so it's only a couple days old, and also when the top layer has had the sand separate from the cement, it's more abrasive on the discs. This one here has been chewing through the pads, even though it's actually softer concrete. The other one is hard, solid concrete, and the pads are actually lasting quite a long time, but I'm, it's not really eating into the concrete very fast. Whereas this one, it's, it's just ripping through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that down a bit. I've got a really aggressive diamond blade. I'm gonna, I'm putting it on my grinder. I'm gonna take that down a bit, get it back into the harder concrete so I can hone it properly. Right now, I've just marked all the high points. Another issue is when you're honing quite a bit, the pads will always go for the softer concrete and dig holes. Previously, I've done a lot with timber and sanded a lot of timber, but uh, yeah, concrete really digs holes where it's soft. So you need to be consistent with your troweling so you get an even surface. So I'll wet it down so we can have a dust-free work environment. Then just use a straight edge marking all the high points so the what i've done is I've just ground down all the high points and now i'm grinding and just working with a pattern so you go up and down and then left to right as you see there left to right then up and down clean it off mark high points grind the high points the one on the left is much flatter at this point I put the legs on 
just makes it a little bit easier to work with. This worked out so well, setting the bolts the way I did, tiny bit of adjustment, not straight on, super tight, super strong, really sturdy, I was really happy with how this came out. Here I can finally show you some honing. So I'm just using a rotary sander with variable speed. You need to be able to control the speed. You don't want to be too fast or you really wear out the pads. It's the same as before we go up and down, then left to right. This is how much wear I got from the pad after about five minutes. Okay, we're doing the final honing now. I've, I've already honed it with 50 grit. I've then done it with 100 grit. Um, there's a couple imperfections I still need to get out with 100 grit. Then after that I'm going to move on to the 200 grit and I may or may not go finish with the 400 grit. You've got to be careful if you go too smooth the sealer won't stick. Um, a tip with this, with your roughest grit, so your lowest grit, which in this case is 50 grit, don't stop honing with that until you've got out all the scratches, all the imperfections. Don't think that it's okay, I've nearly got it when I step down to the 100 grit, that'll get the remaining scratches out. Often it doesn't, and then you end up having to go back to the start and starting again. This is what I'm using as a sealer. I've used it in the past, it seems to work pretty well. This is a handy trick to stop the splatter when you're shutting the lid. Titan airless spray gun, 50-50 mixture. It's meant to be really thin so it penetrates the concrete. Thanks for watching my video. Hope you guys learnt something. I certainly learnt a lot from doing this. Um, things I could definitely improve on is getting a better finish initially with the trowel. Just here we've got some orange peel effect in the sealer. Um, I've been since told the way to fix that is thinning down the mixture further. The other, the other thing I'd probably do is trowel up the sides a little bit and just to seal them up more and I get a better hone finish on the side. Really happy with how the corners came up with the router. That worked great. And the only other thing I'd probably do is make them a little bit thinner, they were quite heavy. Again, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe, like, comment. Thank you very much.